All right, Chiefs, our next briefer. Uh, I saw this brief at the Chief Leadership Academy about a month ago. Uh, this is probably one of the most informative briefs you're going to get. Lots of information that you probably didn't know. Our next briefer is the Senior Enlisted Advisor to the Assistant Secretary of the Air Force for Manpower and Reserve Affairs. He is a career enlisted aviator with 2,800 fly out, flight hours flying the MC-130H Combat Talon II as a loadmaster and the MC-130P as a combat shadow radio operator. Prior to his current assignment, he was the command chief for the 9th Air Expeditionary and Space Air and Space Expeditionary Task Force in Kabul, Afghanistan. Chiefs, please rise and give a warm welcome to Chief Master Sergeant Dustin Hall. Thanks. Can everybody hear me all right? Can you hear me in the back? Hey, how, how, many, uh, how many got kids and you're familiar with the current version of, the, of uh, America's Funniest Videos with like Alfonso Robert Carlton? You guys know what I'm talking about? So I feel like the cameras are rolling uh, as they put me behind the great Todd Simmons and Jay France and then in front of the uh, phenomenally smart and talented Dr. Mary Bartlett. She's gonna, she's gonna, if you haven't heard her speak yet, you're going to get a lot from her. So um, I appreciate you guys being here. Even if it's not voluntary, I still appreciate you being here, and it's pretty awesome to watch 400 Chiefs get this. This is what right looks like. So many of us Chiefs that you've seen come through this week, we went through different iterations, right? Mine was happened to be an AFSOC. There's other folks. We used to have MAGCOM Command Chief or MAGCOM Chief uh, Orientation. I think this is what it should look like. You guys all get to hear from senior leaders at the same time. You get to hear what Chief Bass is thinking, General Brown's thinking, the Undersecretary is thinking at the same time. You get to get, hear the same information at the same time. And then you'll have your breakouts today or tomorrow, whatever that looks like, and then the MAGCOMs will put their different spins on it. So this is what, the, this is what looks like, uh, what looks like uh, right to me. So congrats on your promotion. Congrats on being here. Hopefully we can uh, get out of town without any tornadoes. Hey, show, show of hands, on December 9th, give or take a few days, when these, when these promotions were released, how many of you, and be honest, right, how many of you thought, man, I'm ready to be a chief today? Raise your hands. I did. Raise your hands. All right. Nobody's being honest. That's okay. Now, how many of you feel like after Monday, after Tuesday, Wednesday, and some of today, like, like you know you're not ready to be a chief today? I've talked to a lot of you throughout the week, and one of the things that we've talked about is, man, uh, Dustin, call me Dustin, that's fine, we're all chiefs, you've heard that before. Uh, we are behind. You probably got that from KP, you got that from Jeremiah Ross, you got that from Todd Simmons. We are, you got that from SimSaf, we are behind. And this group in particular is behind where we need to be strategically, even operationally, uh, as we lead our formation. So, so part of what I'm trying to do from the SAF MR position, and that's the Secretary of the Air Force for uh, Manpower and Reserve Affairs. As you heard my bio, I, I flew C-130s and spent some time in Kabul, so now I'm doing personnel stuff. But, but part of this is to educate the force. So this is gonna be informational and developmental, right? So this, these are things that opportunities that are out there that, we, that I had no, no idea they're out there when I was in your seat. Many of us chiefs had no idea these opportunities were out there. Uh, so that part is small. That's the developmental informational piece that I want you to take away from this. That is a small part. The larger part is, what the, can you do with this information to help your airmen? And families. And guardians in some cases. This is the secretariat now, right? So we've got, we've got guardians as well. That's the large part that I want you to take away as in putting this to your toolbox that, that the MPF superintendent or the first sergeant at the AMU or the uh, commander is not the end-all be-all. AFPC CMS case comes back and says no, and that airman is crushed. Whatever it may be, right? They are crushed. ETP gets denied, they are crushed. They get the email saying, hey man, you owe, up, you owe the Air Force money, and they don't know anything about all the things that are in the fine print below that email. Remission, set aside, they're just crushed. And they go to the chief and say, hey, how do I fight this? How do I make this look right? And this is where some of our policies come into play up at SAF uh, MR, and we'll go into that. So that's what we'll do an overview brief. We'll, I'll kind of talk at the uh, look at the structure of the of the Pentagon. It's a it's a it's the Pentagon. So whatever you've heard about it, it's probably right. Okay, 
But I'll, I'll tell you, and I tell my teammates this, and I tell, I tell uh, uh, the rest of MR um, that every single decision we we're trying to make and, and get through, there's an airman and guardian and family member on the other end. So we have to keep that in mind. And it's very easy, believe me, I did it for years. Man, them people in that building don't know what the hell they're doing. They're taking forever to process X, right? I did it. I said it. I still say it, but I try to light a fire under the folks so we can get stuff accomplished a little quicker. Then we'll talk about some current hot topics. So Chief Crowder, uh, the half A1 SEL, talked yesterday for like, seemed like nine hours. Uh, I love DC if he's still here. I don't know. Uh, and then Chief McElroy, the AFPC command chief, she had a little bit of time. And so what, what MR does is provide oversight onto all those programs, uh, plus some more. Um, so he has some hot topics that obviously I'm nested into, and then I have some hot topics we're working up uh, with the secretary. All right. So this is some stuff that, that where the assistant secretary gets their authorities. Obviously, it's nested in 10 uh, uh, U.S. Code, Title 10, Section 8016, and then we get the half mission directive. This is a bunch of blah, blah, blah. I got it. But 1TAC24 is the largest half mission directive we have in, in, the, in the department. And what that does is that gives the Secretary of the Air Force assigns all these functions that we're going to go out in a second and gives it to, to, uh, to my boss, the political appointee, uh, for authorities to, to mobilize forces to do all these different things that we'll talk about. And then you see the Assistant Secretaries exercise that, that SECAF authority. We give direction to air staff and commands, and we oversee operations. So uh, as you'll see, all the MAGCOMs and certain centers and, and DRUs, they absolutely are nested under HAF and then ultimately under SAF-MR. Restraints are just like everybody else's restraints. You know, laws, DOD, directives, uh, ethical, legal, moral, those types of things. Total force human capital portfolio. I don't even know if that even describes it, right? I mean, it's, it's, you'll see what we have. It's just, it's every, every single thing. We do talk about total force, but uh, that has to do with, with people. Oversight of and purpose, purpose timely changes to laws, regulations, and policy, and then our core values, um, uh, which were revised last year. So we talked about the mission directive um, and that's what that looks like, kind of pulls out. I, I underlined some things that we, we, wa we walk over or we walk through in the manpower, military, and civilian personnel policy, equal opportunity. We'll talk about that in a second. Do I have any EO folks in here? So we just, we just pulled equal opportunity in the staff, staff MR. Family readiness, right? So here's what we're talking about, airmen, guardians, and families. Every single thing, family readiness, think FSS, think NAF type stuff inside your installations that falls under MR for oversight. Base exchanges, DECA, morale, welfare, so forth and so, so on. And it's also another big thing here we'll talk about within the brief is that we have uh, the Air Force Review Board's agency um, falls under us. So it's about 120 folks uh, over on Andrews that, that do decorations boards, personnel boards, retention boards, all the things that you guys uh, have been familiar with, hopefully up to this point. So this is what it looks like. The Assistant Secretary of the Air Force is a four-star uh, political appointee. Uh, right now, that uh, confirmation has not happened yet, right? So there's a handful of DOD political appointees that have not been done. It's Mr. Alex Wagner is who President Biden appointed. Uh, we should have him in the seat within the next couple of weeks as the Senate rolls through there. He has, he has to go to what's called a cloture hearing. Again, don't worry about that so much. Once he gets in the seat, um, he'll be the four-star political appointee, and then this is his staff. Senior Military Assistant 06, that's Colonel, Colonel Madison. Special Assistant GS-14, which will come from uh, the Legislative Liaison Branch. That'll be a GS-14 assigned to Mr. Wagner. Senior Listed Advisor, which is myself, and then a Confidential Assistant. And he also has the ARC Advisors. So he's got a Guard and Reserve Advisor, one star, that are his advisors. And then on, on the flip side of this, the PDAS, so the Principal uh, Deputy Assistant Secretary, is right now it's a three-star SES. That's Mr. Federigo. How many people have ever heard of Mr. Federigo? So <laughs> Mr. Federigo is a phenomenal American, uh, one of the best individuals I've met in my entire life, retired chief, first chief ever to become an SES in the building, um, and now he's doing a three-star SES, and he's been wearing about 17 hats since this administration took, took, uh, took charge uh, about over a year ago. Mr. Manasco was in the seat. 
as the, uh, as, the, as the MR. He obviously had to leave when the previous administration left. And so now Mr. Federico has been wearing all these hats for that long. But you primarily know him because his name is always on the front of all the 36 series AFIs, right? And how do I know that? Because our airmen and guardians see Mr. Federico on the front of 36 you pick it, and they email the man directly. <laughs> and that's fine. And he's a great guy. And if you know him, he's like, that's fine. And he replies kindly. He goes, hey, thank you for your note. Chief Hall handles this from here. So then I get it, right? So that's fine. But there's some interesting things, man. It's like somebody wanted to wear their, we're going to email a three-star SES. They want to, e they, 36, 20, 03, they're like, hey, sir, um, I'll, I don't see it in here. Can, are we able to wear our squadron colors in our mess dress? I'm like, oh, man, anybody have an answer for that? Come on. Can you wear squadron, like a squadron color shirt with your mess dress? On your sleeves, right? On your backs? I got all kinds of crazy shirts, right? Yeah? All right. What's the AFI say? White shirt, right? You know, when I replied to him, I said, hey, uh, I think it was a senior master sergeant, I think, I believe. I said, hey, uh, yeah, you guys are chief selects. Get that right. I said, hey, um, I said, hey, sir, you know, to be quite honest, AFI says no. But if you want to do it at your installation level, go ahead and do it, because this is part of Accelerate, Change, or Lose. This is part of breaking through bureaucracy. This is part of creating a better design, letting commanders command, right? And if any one of us are on an installation and we're going to bust somebody down, this is, goes back to what Todd was saying, we're going to start yelling at people for stuff like that, then we need to check ourselves. So that was our answer from the Secretariat. You do you at your installation, and if that wing commander, 06, 07, is okay with it, then you go forth and prosper. I need you on our team, so if this is going to keep you on our team, then we're going to, we're going to go ahead and that's fine. I'm not going to, but we're not going to change the regulation. All right. So MRB, you see the uh, two-star SES is below. Uh, they're all two-star SESs. We'll get to that a little bit. MRB, the board, force management, reserve affairs, airman readiness, and then we just took on two more that I didn't fit on the slide very well. MRQ, which is equal opportunity, so the entirety of the equal opportunity portfolio across the Air Force, and MRL, which is... SES management, that's a whole thing uh, that I don't deal with because I don't have the bandwidth to do it, and plus I don't know anything about SES management, so Mr. Federico handles that along with that SES in there. So main thing I want you to take away from this is the oversight piece. Um, policy is written by half, A1 in most cases, that comes out of A1P, out of policy, signed off by Lieutenant General Kelly, Derek Crowder's boss, and then certified and, and, and oversight provided by SAF MR. All those things you see up there, and we'll go to it when we get uh, into the different directorates. The cool thing, this, this serve as the DOD executive agent support for the National Science Foundation. Anybody know what that is? Man, you guys seen C-130s with skis on them up in New York, and they fly the Arctic missions? Yeah, I can't wait to go on that TDY. I thought I'd just share that with you. That's going to be fun. I'll send pictures. You guys can see it on social media. All right. All right, first thing's up, MRM. Again, I'm not going to read off every single one of these, but MRM is led by Mr. Mark Engelbaum, two-star SES, and his, he has a chief, Chief Master Sergeant Wendy T. I feel like Chief T knows everybody in the Air Force, so if you know Wendy, I see a bunch of nods over here. If you know Wendy, she's a phenomenal teammate of mine, texts every day, and she's passionate about what she does. And this is everything that's in, well, this is the first page that's in MRM's portfolio. Uh, I'll, pull, I'll go through and pick a couple things that pertain to this crowd. Uh, leave policy, absence, and leave. Everything has to do with leave. We talked about, uh, we, we got uh, care, caregiver separation that Derek talked about a couple days ago. We got these, now we can take 12 weeks of, of, of parental leave, and he was spot on, right? Because everybody calls our office and say, man, where's, I'm trying to take leave, NDAA, you guys, are, you guys suck. We're like, hold on, man, right? We got, a, we got a year for the DOD to tell us to do it, Congress, that's Congress's piece, right? They did the NDAA, and then they've got a year for DOD to tell us to do it and what left and right parameters. And if you notice, the NDAA says allows up to 12 weeks. So the conversation is, is 12 weeks the answer? Just keep that here. I don't know who people are recording me, but that's, that's some of the conversations that we talked about, and Chief Crowder was saying, hey, we need you to lead through these times. Is 12 weeks the answer? So the Air Force is looking at what that's going to look like to operations, to mission, to families, to, to the whole bit. We're not saying it's going to be zero, 
but is 12 weeks and then eight weeks or, whatever, or 10 weeks, is that, is that the answer? Um, uniform for civilian employees, employee benefits, what, another thing is in here, and I don't know if it's on this one, pay and retirements, so blended retirement system, military leave policy, JTR, MRM, so Mr. Engelbaum and Chief T are my primary conduit when we talk about changes to the JTR. And a lot of times when we talk about, hey man, BAS or BAH, whatever at this location sucks, or partial per diem, I, can't, I don't want to eat this chow hall, these are the things we get, because partial per diem sucks. And so if it goes to the JTR, we got to get our sister services on board, right? So this is how I use MRM to, to work with sister services to change that JTR. I'll be honest with you, and, and, and some of the MAGCON command chiefs, don't, you know, they, they, they feel it when I talk about this. If, if you just come to me with, this, with a service-specific problem that has to do with a DOTI or JTR-type document, that's going to be a challenge. You've got to rally your joint partners, and this is, this is more for your knowledge and education than I know you guys, you know, unless you're operating in that environment. So um, that's how the JTR and DOTIs work. It's kind of tough. Here's page two. Joint matters, ADSCs, active duty service commitment waivers and, and policy, uh, classifications, rated management, right? So how we're rating, how we're managing our rated officers. Extremism, awards and decoration, we hold an awards court. How many, uh, where's my boy Drew at? So, you know, when you change, when you change AFSCs or you do different things and then you, you, everybody has to have all their annual awards, and, and some of them are like 17 deep, right? So I'm a, I'm a one alpha by trade. So if I just have like 17 one alpha awards, those got to, if, if we're creating new ones or, or changing whatever, we, they got to come up here and we, we hold an awards court. Um, dun, dun, dun. So that's just that, that looks like. And, and, and quite frankly, uh, there's a balance between take care of our airmen and focusing on what's important to our nation. And I'll just kind of leave it at that, right? And the, it's both, but there's a fine balance, and this is where you guys come in at. Like, hey, you know, I got it. We're going to put these 17 awards up for a career field that maybe is 400 strong, um, or we can, we can take this time and, and, brand, and bandwidth and, and focus on China, right? It's just some of the conversations. All, and I've also learned that if I say pre-decisional in a lot of things, I, you can't get in trouble. So everything's pre-decisional. <laughs> Page three, enlisted recruiting. So the recruiting agency, the entire... And the entirety of the recruiting agency and all the recruiters uh, fall under oversight with MR, um, MRM. So when we talk about, you know, Chief Simmons retired, talked about, hey, you know, are we recruiting the right people? Are we recruiting the right people in 2022 to build the Air Force in 2030? Show of hands if you think we are. Okay. I, I, would, I would argue we're not. Right? I would argue that we're, that, we're, that we're not recruiting the right people, and here's why, because he talked about this propensity to serve, and this propensity to serve keeps shrinking. That's not meaning qualifi qualified, right? I, you may have a bunch of qualified people to serve, but they don't want to. And so then you look at the influencers, whether that be mom, dad, brother, sister, cousin, grandfather, grandpa, grandmother, whatever, school teachers. Underprivileged communities. Are we, do we have the right influencers in place? Do we have the right marketing in place? So this is, we are working very hard to change our brand, and we have to change our brand. Daytona 500 this week. We're going to have an Air Force contingent out there, as we have for many years. We're going to have a, a car with an Air Force sticker on there, but people watching that, that race, we need to expand that for what 2030 looks like. So those are the conversations we're having with, with the Recruiting Command. United States Air Force Academy falls under us. So Chief Sarah Sparks is a great friend of mine, great teammate. We sync all the time, talk about athletics, talk about uh, the, uh, the uh, academy, right, the preppy academy that hopefully a lot of us have maybe at some point in time sent airmen to, enlisted airmen to, and they, be, they go to the academy and they come commission. That all falls under us. I've got to speed this up. They gave me 30 minutes for this. Crazy. All right. There's page four for MRM. We'll get into the page five for MRM. All right, this is MRR. So Ms. Christy Nolta, she's the two-star equivalent SES that's in charge of MRR, a retired Air Force Colonel. Her chief uh, is in transition. Chief Master Sergeant Jamie Wardrop uh, just PCSed out to be a group superintendent out in Nellis. Uh, and the new SEL, um, I don't know if she's been notified yet, so I'm not gonna say it here, but uh, she will be in place in short order. And this is what they do. And she, she's been these a little bit. I like how she's been these critical 
um, active and then pass through. Pass through meaning that's true oversight, like that's cool, right? All right, go keep going. But critical things that we talk about with Congress, ARFPIC, the Reserve Forces Policy Committee, I was the worst total force chief that I've ever met in my entire life. And I got up here and they say, hey, here's a whole directorate that just, just talks about re reserve and, and the art community and guard, and I'm like, oh my God. How many, how many people suck at total force stuff? It's okay, I, was, I'm, I suck at it. Man, the days, the points, the mandates, but I've gotten very smart thanks to, thanks to a bunch of incredible teammates. Um, See that dual status command on the active side, women, peace, security, women in service working group. Uh, what else? Monitor. Yeah, they monitor those things. Yellow ribbon program, innovative readiness training, uh, total force associations, right? Some, some more total force uh, talk there. Page two, National Science Foundation we already talked about. Civil Air Patrol. So civil, the entirety of the Civil Air Patrol, how many people are familiar with CAP? Raise your hand. So Civil Air Patrol is actually, no kidding, an auxiliary force of the Air Force. So when we talk about total force, and this is something good for the Chiefs, we have just changed this recently, that when we say total force, that includes Civil Air Patrol. So their airplanes, it's like $90 million we budget to them every year. Their airplanes are all ours. Uh, we, train, we, we train them. We do missions, like rescue missions, and, and um, we, we train with fighters with them. So that's a huge, uh, a, a huge portfolio inside this. CAP USAF headquarters is actually here at Maxwell, phenomenal building, and, they, and it's, a, it's a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool program. I'll be honest with you. And, and for 12 years old and up, if you have interest, you know, like my 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 kid, he's going to be 12 in a few weeks, and I'm not sure he understands my urgency to see him succeed when he turns 18. If you know what I mean, like, <laughs> I don't know if he, I don't know if he gets my plan, but. Uh, but he will, I'm gonna take him to cap and let him see, see how it is, see if he likes it. So hopefully, pray to God. All right, page three, child and youth programs. We talk about CDC, we talk about background checks, we talk about uh, uh, youth, everything that has to do with child and youth programs, after school care, all these things that, that our airmen and guardians care about. EFMP, I don't know if that's on here, but yep, EFMP. You saw my man Derek Crowder take about 30 questions on EFMP the other day. Every time I go out and give this brief, every time DC or Aaron McElroy go out and give these briefs, we take about 30 questions on EFMP. So I would ask you guys to say this as, as leaders, and you go back to your unit, and I think Chief Crowder or somebody talked about it, um, let's talk about the changes we have made versus how broken it still is, right? Mah, mah. Versus last year, August of 2021, EFMP was in all kinds of bad shape and, and terrible. So we, we implemented the, the central cell, we implemented fast track, we implemented these everything going down to AFPC. So those things are now starting to take hold, okay? You will still get, I guarantee, at least through the end of April, you'll still get these one-offs. They'll come to you and say, Chief, I submitted this and this and this, and it's been 65 days, okay? And if that's the case, I want every single one of you to call me. EFMP is that important that we have to get this right. So uh, Ms. Nolta and the team in MR, MRR is absolutely focused on that. I work with, with um, with Mac a lot at AFPC and her EFMP team that we have to get this right. So if you guys hear this and, and it's frustrating and, and go back to day one where you don't have all the answers, call me and I'll, I'll be that answer for you. We'll find it and we'll get it through. Okay, we've, walked, we've, we've hand walked a few individual cases already. All right, foot stomp on EFMP. Page three of uh, Ms. Nolta's portfolio. Warrior Games, Air Force Wounded Warrior pro, uh, Program is absolutely entirely in, into our, into MRR. Also, when we talk about resiliency, so I think A1Z briefed yesterday, I had to step out for that, but A1Z briefed resiliency, that is also nested into when we talk about suicide awareness, we talk about um, no wrong door, IRC, those are all things that I think were brought up yesterday, those fall absolutely with oversight from MRR, or, yep, MRR. So the transformation has been absolutely smooth, right? For the military health system. That's a joke for those of you who are awake, right? It's not. It's been tough. And we've been doing this for two years now. It's been a tough transition, and it's, and it's not going to get any easier because they still want to cut these, this manning, but, our, but yet we still have need. Our airmen, guardians, and family members still have need, but we haven't quite got there. So Ms. Nolta absolutely works to try to make, make that work right. And I'll tell you, the undersecretary and secretary are incredibly involved and interested in this. Because again, we're, we're not, that does not look right yet. 
Transgender, uh, that policy is uh, squarely out of, you know, we kind of just nested with DOD and we had our own twist, but that comes out of MR and she heads up that, por that portfolio. Um, absolutely happy to talk about that. We, act, we, we, we hand walk a lot of those singles, individual cases that are hung up somewhere. We'll walk those through to, to success. So if you guys ever have any questions on that, uh, absolutely hit me up. More MRR. Here's MRB. So this is the, the board folks, what they do over at Andrews. And these are all the boards that they, they, they look at. Person, security Appeal Board, uh, the PDBR, Disability Board. Of course, the Air Force Board of Correction and Military Records, which I can tell you right now is about 2,500 deep. And so if, if you've got an airman or that you want to submit, they're submitted something to the VCMR, you're, you're looking at probably about seven, eight months right now. But I will say this, and this is my, my foot stomp from this, and the same with re remissions board. We talk about debt that's owed to the Air Force. And I talked to the First Sergeant Academy about this a couple months ago, is that a lot of this comes back to education. So we're correcting, a bill, doing a BCMR, we're doing a remissions case for, for wrongful debt, which could have been avoided at the tactical level, right? Could have been avoided at the MPF, and I got it. We've got a lot of young A1Cs and senior airmen at the desk at MPF, but we got first sergeants, chiefs, and, and midline supervisors in that, in that entire chain. So if something doesn't seem right, it's probably not right. Ask the hard questions, and again, I'll, I'll tell you this, if, call me. Chief, this doesn't make any sense. If it, doesn't make any, if it doesn't make any sense to this crowd, it probably doesn't make any sense. Don't just have the airmen go through the motions because they're going to be stuck and they're going to be, you know, their family's going to suffer either financial hardship or PS, PCS hardship because it's stuck in this BCMR remission process. All right, hot topics real quick. SRBs are always a hot topic. We've talked about the fiscal environment that Jeremiah briefed on Tuesday. Uh, that we're not getting any more money, right? You guys see a bunch of people go behind that curtain. It's not to get money. Okay, so SRBs, you, you might see them come down a little bit. Uh, how many one in fours do we have in here? Are we still tracking anything, any problems with that SRB issue? That's issued, that's, that's resolved, I can put a line to that, thank you. AFSC changes. <laughs> hey, I, I tell you, man, many times when we get crossed up with these SRBs and even ADSCs at some points, because we, we do it to ourselves, we change our AFSCs. So quick success story. Uh, you know, at, AF at AFIT, when we send an airman to AFIT, we used to have to change their AFSC. So if I have an EOD member who just re-enlisted and they got an SRB for that, for that zone in their, in their EOD AFSC, and then we sent them to AFIT, because we've asked them to go get this year of education, and we've made them this totally different AFSC, which I think was a, anybody? It's like an eight something, right? Or it was, nine, it was some AFSC that didn't make a sense. And, then, and so here's Air Force saying, ah, you've got to give us this money back and you're going to lose the rest of it. Oh, what? Right? So now AFIT's no longer changing that AFSC. You just keep your AFSC, you keep your money, you keep your ADS, ADSCs, all that thing straight. So again, if it doesn't make sense, it probably doesn't make sense. Okay? Don't just go with status quo, please. Chief Master Sergeant, some parole and clemency boards uh, soon, not maybe this crowd, but your group superintendents and, and up will be asked and eligible to sit on parole and clemency boards. This is a uh, um, eye-opening thing. I've sat in the last five or six, and it's very, very eye-opening and educating. And this is the idea, and hopefully your MAGCOM command chiefs will, will filter this down as I, as I ask them to provide chiefs. All COVID-related items, uh, that is particularly the ones that come through Congress, uh, SAF-MR is the repository for that, so yay for that. And then... Combat zone, tax exclusion, hostile fire, we're looking at different sites that maybe don't need that anymore. And maybe we could focus it. Particularly, I'm talking to my, my brother Ben Hedden in, in UCF AFAF about how West Africa, right? The Trans Sahel, you know, they're, they're, they, they could probably use something that we're no longer in Afghanistan, so we, maybe we can move some money around there. Uh, so we're going to work on that list. Awards Council, I talked about active duty enlisted over 20 years. They kind of don't enjoy the same benefits that. Everybody else does when it comes to retirement in lieu of court martial or discharge. So we're looking at that. We have to work with um, GC and JA, DOD. This is a policy that, that we, again, did to ourselves years ago. And now our airmen are dis disenfranchised when they're, when they're presented with the same opportunity that maybe their commissioned counterpart is. And that commissioned counterpart gets, gets to retire in the grade that the last grade held honorably. Whereas right now, active duty over, enlisted, or over 20 enlisted uh, they, they can be busted out a couple stripes and just no retirement. So we're trying to fix that. All right. That was quick. I tell you what, uh, Jeremy, I appreciate you and the team. I do, brother. But, you know, 
30 minutes is not enough to get into this portfolio. That you can call and email me anytime you want. Um, and if anybody has any questions now, uh, you can, I'll be up front hanging out. Um, but please do not, I just challenge you, do not take status quo. This is how we get into these policy problems that we're into now. This is how we always always done it. This, this, this regulation hasn't been certified since 1992, but we're just going to keep doing it. No. This crowd needs to, challenge, needs to challenge that. Now's the time to do it. If there's, you know, here's an example, right? ETPs. If ETP is the norm, then why is it an ETP? Right? I get this from my flying days. We used to wave everything. Well, why, why, are, we, why are we waving it? Why don't we just make it the norm? So if you see your wing or your installation or your organization processing a bunch of ETPs up for, for hire, say, man, why, why are we doing this? And they always come back approved. That's wasting time, right? Bureaucracy, design, where we can focus on competition. So I, I appreciate your time. I do. And I'll hang out up front if you guys have any questions. Thanks.